All right, welcome to Rocket Vlogs. Welcome to the Rocket slash Car Building Shop. This is my roommate Brennan. Hello. Who is getting sucked into the world of high power rocketry. So, a little bit of a story here for you. He has been trying to get into rockets or kind of wanted to get into rockets and then never bought one. So, recently I was given a public missiles Callisto and I decided to give it to him. But he can't just use someone else's rocket that they built for a certification. So, we deconstructed it. And are making a few changes. Which, from my perspective, it's in kit form again. And uh, with all the work he's going to be doing and learning how to do, in my opinion, it makes it a rocket that he built. But, I guess that will be up to our prefect, Greg. We'll see. Like I said, Brennan is learning about rockets, and the first thing I learned him was that phenolic tubing is a no-no. It's not a no-no, but it's not great. So we're going to fiberglass it, which means Brennan's got some sanding to do. So first telltale of it being an old public missiles kit is there used to be a big launch lug here that I flung across the shop on accident. There it is, brass tube. Rule number two, no launch lugs, rail buttons. Uh, yeah. So we were popping these out and we were talking about cutting the fins, making them a different shape because I thought it was old enough that they were plywood fins, but they are G10, so we're just going to leave them the shape that they came. And Brennan took them to the bench grinder, took all the epoxy off, so now that's good to go. We cut through the uh, motor mount when we were taking it apart, so he ordered a new motor mount kit. We're doing lock precision parts. I'm gonna keep piston ejection system because I quite like that, and it's a simple way to start. And you'll never forget to not burn your parachute. So yeah, time to start sanding this body tube down. All right, here's our fiberglassing rig. Two sawhorses that were at the shop and this dowel. He's really coming in clutch with all the stuff that uh, was here beforehand. Yep. I was about to say I'm gonna go run and grab something to mix epoxy in, but uh, we're 22 and 23 years old, so I'm sure you can figure out what was going on there, but we might as well put these to good use. First, we're gonna wipe the tube down, try and get as much dust off as we can. Tape the inside edges of the tube so no epoxy soaks in there. It's phenolic so it wouldn't really be the end of the world if it did, but it's easier if it doesn't. So now we're gonna lay out this six ounce cloth. It's just the, uh, I think it's roughly six ounce, I don't even actually know, but it's just the cloth they sell at Lowe's and Home Depot, the Bondo brand stuff. Works just fine. So Brennan's never flown a high power rocket before and he wants to go really high because he hasn't gone really high and had to go get a rocket yet. So we're doing one wrap of this cloth, which. Does it matter which side's up? No. So sit her on there. Like that? Like a little overhang? Yep. Now roll it around at once. Right there. Now cut the cloth. Oh, it wasn't recording. Oh well. So that's our piece, that's what we're using. Now, let's go get some epoxy. We're using good old West Systems 105 resin 206 hardener, the classic. I've had this epoxy for like seven years and it's still going strong. So I mix a batch of it at home, make sure it still hardens and everything properly. And it does, so we're gonna use it. All right, so get two pumps of each in there. The pumps make it one-to-one -one mix, even though this epoxy is not one-to-one. -one, go real slow. All right, we're gonna glove up, so I'm probably gonna just set the camera up and uh, have it watching us while we work on it, because I'm gonna help him get it right. He's never fiberglassed anything before. So, the idea here, contrary to popular belief is not to put the cloth, the cloth on and then brush epoxy into it. What you want to do is try to use as little epoxy as possible. So what we're going to do is put the tube on the rack, coat it in a thin layer of epoxy, wrap the cloth around it, and then use the brushes without dipping them to pat it and pull the epoxy into the cloth. That's the plan. We'll see how it does. All right, 
right, so the tube's looking really good, actually. Uh, we were a little light on the epoxy for where the overlap is, but I just brushed a little more into it. It's looking like it took it really well, though, and we're probably going to brush just a little bit extra over these edges. So once it gets to the green stage, I've never understood that. I've never seen it turn green, but when it's like almost cured, you just take an X-Acto knife and run it around the edges. All right, well, you just did your first composite layup. How do you feel? It turned out a whole lot better than I thought. Dude, uh, it, it I looks thought it looks really good. So many issues that it was gonna take not five minutes. It's definitely way better than my first attempt, but then again, I was fourteen when I did that. But <laughs> it does look really good. Well, it's three o three in the morning, so uh, I'm gonna go to bed. All right, it's another day. We've trimmed the fiberglass off the edges with an X-Acto knife and been sanding it and truing it up. Edges look pretty straight. Not perfectly straight, but pretty. So, what we did was we wrapped a piece of paper around the tube as tight as we could and marked where the overlap was. So now, from here to here, is our circumference of the tube. So, since there's three fins, we divide that by three and make a mark every 2.4 inches. And then draw lines down it. Then we'll cut a little bit of this paper off, throw it back on the tube, and uh, use a straight edge to draw where the fins are going to go down the side of the tube with this red sharpie. Alright, so we did some new math and recorrected a few things, but those are all even, which is what we need. So now we're going to cut a good chunk of this off, wrap it around the tube, and tape it together. And then I think that piece of bar on the wall there will be easiest. The motor mount is here. Uh, they didn't deliver it because our names weren't on the mailbox. We've only been living here for a week, so that's pretty cool. I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't either. What even is this? I hope it's an instructional DVD. Aviation Workshop. Dude, Apogee doesn't mess around. Alright, so we 1000% ordered a motor mount kit, but we got a motor tube adapter. Luckily, this rocket is 54 millimeters, so now we just have a whole bunch of surface area that we need to cut out so we can still mount the fins. So, I mean, we'll make it work, but kind of a nuisance. Well what we can do is we can glue the centering rings in and then we know for sure they'll be flat because we can do it this way and then cut the tube around the centering ring like just a little yeah. bit bigger than the centering ring and then put the motor tube in there that way the fins can still go through. It's important to not be hungry or thirsty while you're working on rockets so sandwich and beer Dinner champions. Alright, so the plan of action is we're going to cut like half inch pieces of this coupler tube here. That way we have a lot of buffers in case we mess it up somehow. Epoxy the centering rings into those and then use those pieces as centering rings, which is cool because it's a little more surface area. And if we butt the centering rings up against the end like this and have little fillets on the inside. So we're cutting the fin slots with a Dremel and doing the edges of the fin slots as a pain with a Dremel. So we're going to drill holes at the front and rear. So we have those pre-done and then just slice out the rest with the diamond bit on the Dremel. And uh, see how they fit. Looks good to me. Now do that two more times. There you go. That one's a little loose, but the other one... That one's a little loose. <laughs> Alright, so here's the idea for the uh, centering ring adapter. It's just a piece of the coupler cut. Ring slides inside. And uh, you know how centering rings work. Good old Gorilla 5 minute epoxy. I'm just going to blast out the centering ring a little bit so we can fit the uh, shock cord. Alright, so the ring's notched out. Strap is in. So we're just going to measure out 
three eighths from the end of this side of the tube so he can put his arrow pack in that's on the way. Ghetto centering rings. Looking good. Oh, looks like a rocket. Looks like a short PML Callisto. Our motor mount's done. Shot cord is now drying. The epoxy's in place. We did a mock-up. Not too bad. Everything fits. So we hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you want to see more of this project and all of the high power rocket stuff we're doing, go ahead and click the subscribe button. It's free. It'll notify you every time we post a video. And uh, this is the kind of stuff we'll be doing. We'll be covering some launches and stuff. Hopefully get to a couple big ones this year. And uh, make some good old fashioned cool rocket videos. So uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Join us next time on Rocket Vlogs. Peace out. Peace out.